Something came from bottom and bottom and bottom. Something came from bottom and bottom and bottom. Welcome to Something Came From Baltimore. I'm your host, Tom Gowker, and tonight, all the way from UK, I have Kevin Haynes and his group. Uh, I am very excited about this album. It is called Eho Si Po, and it is 12 years old. As This is a reissue. It was reissued on June 5th, 2020. Jazz Refresh Label. This is a Afro-Cuban vibe. The album is sung in, in Yoruba. It's a language that is, is spoken in West Africa. Africa, normally in Nigeria, over 40 million people um, speak this language. It's steeped in culture and history. Name of the band is Kevin Haynes, Grupo Alacua, Cuban, Yorba. Before we talk to Kevin about this album, let's listen to a brief interlude of Orasa Papa Obi. So thank you very much. Thank you for coming out with a great album. Um, all my friends are freaking out on this album. So thank you. I was trying to be more intelligent on this interview and get these pronunciations correctly. I I went on Wikipedia okay. last night. You know, what? let me let, yeah. let me start. Let me start. Sorry, sorry to, interu- to, go to ahead. interrupt. Let me start. If you're gonna go to any tr- Google or translation places. They may not give you the full translation correctly. The the bottom line is when you're an interviewer, you don't want to sound really stupid. And and I mm-hmm. and I wrote to a, a friend of mine, I said, Oh, I think I might be out of my element on this one. But we'll give it a try. And uh it doesn't hurt to look bad. <laughs> it's a good thing. Well, sometimes it's just how it goes. You know, sometimes we're learning in it. So then sometimes we don't want to learn in front of a lot of different people at the same time. But sometimes it has to happen like that. Oh, yeah, That's yeah. Well, the, the beauty of it is that it's a fantastic album. And uh, if it can reach as many people as possible, that's a good thing. So let's let's start this out with Thank just you. an intro. I appreciate um, you. Give thanks for, you know, your intentions of you know wanting to be able to allow the audience to understand what they're listening to and and so forth. So, yeah, I give thanks. Great. So, uh, uh, or Kevin Haynes, welcome to Something Came From Baltimore. Yes, greetings. Uh, the the name of your group is uh, Grupo El, El Qual? Um The name of the group is Kevin Haynes Grupo um, Spanish El Aguil, um Cuban Yoruba. So the name of the album that people are going to find this. Yeah, so the name of the album is Ajo She Po. As you said, the, the language itself um, is Yoruba. And... Within the Yoruba language, there's different strands of Yoruba language in itself. So we have the translated version of Yoruba. When I say that, um, somebody's translated it directly from an English um, point of view. Um, then there's a the spiritual language. So, yeah, so a lot of the time, the uh, meanings of the songs and the album itself is coming from a spiritual translation of the word in Yoruba. You're actually born and raised in the UK, but you have a Trinidad background. And then that's correct. And then this this uh, is um, a language like 40 million people speak this language and it's predominantly Mm -hmm. in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Um, Cameroon, Togo, Benin, um, Brazil, Cuba. Trinidad and other places. So uh, it's not a far stretch that this is a common language for you. Uh, correct. Okay. So is this a reissue because it's it's coming up as two thousand eight as a, a release? 
That's correct. So it was, um, I recorded it in 2008 and Jazz Refresh, you know, kind of prodding me to, you know, they'd love to let the world know about it, basically, because they thought it was a wonderful album. They felt that um, um, my musical expertise wasn't really um, appreciated in the UK. Um, so they kind of made more the effort to make sure that you have it today. So that's the kind of situation there. I think the world has kind of caught up with you. Uh, that's, what I, that's what I said to them. I said, you know, the music was created for now. Mm -hmm. And I suppose when I created at the time, people wasn't ready. Yeah. And I think there's a lot of music that goes like that. You know, great musicians uh, or great artists, I should say. Um, you know, sometimes that's what goes on. You know, um, there's plenty of jazz musicians that went through that. Now, Santeria is a language that's a, a part of this. Is there any connection into that in the songs that we're listening to? Yeah, so Santeria is coming from um, Lukumi, which is the Yoruba, the Yoruba, um, uh, Yoruba Cuban and uh, Brazilian language. And so um, they've constructed... Um, most of the Yorubas that they remembered from their uh, colonial slave um, experiences and um, what they remembered. And uh, if they couldn't remember, they used sounds that interpreted the same words or same meanings. And that became Look At Me. So we have um, another a kind of Yoruba language based on the experiences of the people now and we have an ancient language that's where the people are still speaking the language they were speaking thousands of years ago drum am i saying it correctly uh is, is... That's, that's correct oh yeah i got one right so you're doing, you're doing good Tom, don't worry. <laughs> uh, it's it's featured uh throughout the the album the butter drum system is yes they are calling the energies with these tools butter drums and also at the same time they, they i think i would call it the first recording machine really um, they are the ones who recorded what was happening musically, though. Mm -hmm. And so the courts, the kings, the diviners, the other spiritual priests, um, they would record what's happening around them in the sense of, you know, musically, tell the people, let the kings know, let the diviners know that they're aware of what they're doing as well. And so this became part of the expression of the nation mm -hmm. and so what he had is then when the new king came and if there was something that uh, he didn't remember or he didn't uh, pay attention to then the drummers and that's our drummers and singers would now express these same things and to remind them uh, and so on so uh, at the same time calling the energies to be present oh. while this is happening so this is the basics of what Batar drumming is about. And this has been transferred to diaspora, um, which has continued in Cuba. And uh, people like myself are continuing to do the same things. Iba o Iba. Iba o lo du mari, o ba to da gogo wa. O 
is your influences at like they're throughout the album it, it kind of changes in tone and textures but i don't want to jump in and tell you where i think they are <laughs> <laughs> well i mean you know a lot of people say a lot of different things so um if you're listening to my saxophone playing i think you're gonna hear everybody in jazz isn't it really mm-hmm, I agree. anybody that's in anybody that's important in jazz so obviously people like coltrane charlie parker um, everybody. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I hear a little Sonny Rollins yeah. in there too. Y- yeah, exactly. Um, anybody that is um, touched my soul and spirit, and 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 as far as uh, jazz is concerned, well, within them 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 types of characters that you just mentioned, uh, for some particular reason. But saxophone players, um, specifically, yeah, Sonny Rollins. Uh, obviously, Bird is probably at the top. Coltrane is next to Bird. I'm all really new people as well. There's so many that um, I can't mention them all, to be honest. But they're the main ones, of course. And then everybody else that, um, Joe Henderson, the, what I play is what I, I admire. So that's it, really. And then there's a gentleman from New Orleans right now called, um, I'm going to say Christian Scott, but that's not correct. It's, uh, forget it. I can't remember his name. His, <laughs> uh, yeah, it is Christian Scott. Yeah, he's awesome. He's doing some really unique things, and it seems like okay. this. Uh, he must have listened to your al- this album in 2008 because it seems very right. familiar. Right, <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, all right. Maybe uh, there's, there's, there's a chance. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, I think um, just like Charlie Parker when he was playing his music, um, there was um, Sonny Stitt was playing as well. Mm-hmm. So what I'm saying is sometimes we can easily share ideas, you know, or have a creative idea that is kind of mirrored and just be out there. But the context of how we do that it just might go out in a different way. Shogbo now, um, that's the name mm. of uh, a place in uh, Nigeria. It's uh, also the name of um, a, a river, the Shogbo River. Um, it's associated with a female goddess um, who's associated with the river. And at the same time, um, I, I learned my teachers are from a Shogbo, the people that uh, I studied uh, Batar drumming with. They're from Ashogbo. I spent um, quite a lot of time in Ashogbo um, with them over years. And um, basically, I'm expressing their old, an art form that is kind of dying now. And so, yeah, so Ashogbo is my kind of 
my heart feeling for the people and my and, and my gratitude for what they've given to me. That song, Oshobo, is my favorite song on this album. And I love how you're just playing some serious sax. And then right around 8, 830, it, it comes as kind of switches. There's the, the Kora. Uh, instrument and it kind of takes over and then there's there's language and I'm not really sure obviously what you guys are saying but uh, it's very pretty uh, do you know what what the the language uh, that obviously you do so what is the language <laughs> <laughs> just give it to me straight what are you guys saying <laughs> all right okay a lot of my music as well um, maybe which is maybe something that we haven't spoken about I write a lot of the lyrics mm -hmm. And um, um, the um, invocations to them. So a lot of them are based on invocations of some kind. Um, a shogbo um, is an invocation of the spirit of a female de deity. And uh, um, the other parts of my work is I work with different African experiences as well. So we 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 are now hearing the same story from Wolof people or Mandinga people um, who share the same stories, who share the same reasonings. And so this is kind of a way for me to, to work um, with my African brothers from another perspective, um, saying the same stories. So what we did is I just got them together and said, listen, I have this, I have an invocation for you and I need you to, to reply to me to this in your language and and then so that we can be speaking the same thing so okay. that's what that's about basically so we're just speaking together um uh, recollecting the same story of the river it's a goddess it's um it's an energy of fertility and life um, and other aspects of that particular characteristics in that woman that was also we know about that was the this we're singing about um, so that's what the song's about. What, one's in Yoruba, one's in uh, Wolof. Mojuba, uh, mm -hmm. okay. Go, go ahead. Mojuba, Mojuba, Mojuba Lerun. Okay. And so, Mo what's yeah. What's going on with that song? Yeah. So, Mojuba Lerun is basically about the awareness of heaven and the department in heaven. Um, in our corpuses of understanding in spiritual contexts, um, we understand what departments of heavens are and what the story is about that. So. This is just really an awareness for those who um, may have forgotten or it wasn't taught. Um, this is a way. This is a way for them to understand that there's more than one. It's, heaven is just more than um, what you think. I love that. <laughs> Shango 
de kama wale o Adolu ani kama mare o Adolu ani kama wale o Adolu ani bala kama wale o Adolu ani kama wale o I am so happy to talk to you. I only wish that you have a deeper catalog. Well, that's funny enough, I've got two other albums in the wing, waiting in the wings. Good. Um, but um, Jazz Refresh, they're the ones that said, listen, let's just make sure people got their other albums first. Let's make sure they got all your music and people know what you've been doing. And, you know, and then we can put what's new. Perfect. I said, fine, let's go. So, so there's definitely new. Obviously, one is an album. And one is uh, just a folklore album that I've got in the wings waiting to come out. So right. it's just drumming and, and singing. Um, and then I've got yeah some new music um, that is in the wings waiting with some of the some of the young cats here and in the UK, um, some great guys and um, some of the traditional people that on this one. So it's kind of it's still coming back from this from this album, um, but there's more. There's more. It's a journey, yeah. like you said. My music is a journey, so I'm still making a reference to this album. But we're we're in another movement now. We're in another time. There's other things that I'm, I'm, I'm speaking about that is, I suppose, for later. So. Perfect. Well, I'm, I hope the world gets turned on. Kevin Haynes, uh, thank you very much for speaking to me on Something Came From Baltimore. It's my pleasure. Thank you very much, Tom. I really appreciate um, you contacting me and uh, appreciate your heart feeling for the music. And uh, I appreciate that you're sharing it to so many different people. Love to you. Blessings to you. And um, you're doing great work. Um, thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Hi, it's Tom Gowker, and I am the host of Something Came From Baltimore. Something Came From Baltimore is a words and music podcast, and it has famous and future famous artists, artists like Sean Jones, Rupert Holmes, Auntie Hammy, Joey DeFrancesco, Go Go Penguin, Joey Alexander, Bucanti, Gerald Albright, Paula Cole, and Kat Edmondson. It's music that matters. It's music for your ears. Listen and subscribe to Something Came From Baltimore and be a part of that Be More music scene.